Hello, this is Rizzo from Radicad, and in this video, talking about building the data analytics team, I'm going to talk about the roles within the team. What roles do you need? What um, specification each role requires? What are the things that you need to know uh, when you are in each of roles and how these roles work together? Uh, let's go and check it out. Um, okay, to, to, um, to build the analytics team, uh, the roles is one part of it, but the other part of uh, building the analytics team is that um, you have the goal defined and the culture in the organization, the training, soft skills, all of that. I explained all of those in another video. In this video, I'm talking about the roles uh, that is needed in the analytical team itself. And what are these roles? So um, these are the roles that I'm going to talk about and let's start them with, uh, with I would say, the most important role. As an analytical uh, team, uh, one of the things is that to make sure that the analytical project is moving towards a goal that, and that goal is business centric. So usually you need a, a project sponsor. This is someone um, usually in the CXO level uh, and related to board of directors, would have some communication with them, can define the, uh, the reason for this analytical project, like we are doing it to get this outcome, uh, things like that, and can explain the value of that to the rest of the team. Because if you don't have someone like that, it is hard to communicate with the, with the uh, stakeholders and come up with a reason that why analytical project is needed. It, just saying that analytical project is needed because we need to analyze the data is not enough. You need to come up with a business understanding of it. Like, we, uh, like in this sales system, we need uh, to have some kind of information so that we can make informed decisions about what new products we should add in our sales line or if we need to add a new branch in a specific place and things like that. And those has to be informed decisions so um, the project sponsor can uh, have this kind of communication with the rest of the stakeholders and say this is why we need this. And this is an ongoing thing. It's not just to start the project. This has to be always communicated, uh, like how the project process is, uh, how the, um, like what are the risks, what are the new things that are in the policy and the vision of the company and organization that has to be brought into this. This is not a technical role in the analytical team. Usually this person is not even in the analytical team it's someone like outside like CIO CFO but would have a really important role to get the whole analytical project going another non-technical role is the business analyst business analyst is someone who is um, like a senior level um, senior person in the business not senior level in terms of like being a CXO or a director or something like that but someone who have been working in this business long enough that understand the process uh, in this business like for example in order to get this done this is the process that the business takes these are the systems that we worked with to get that um, that type of work done for example this source system this source system um, and these are how we connect to the data of those systems this is also important to understand the data related to that business it doesn't have to be a person under, understanding database systems or things like that but should be able to understand where to get data related to each entity for example if i want customer information this is the most um, trust worthy place in this business to get customer information or for example the invoice first appears in this system so this is the best place to get that this uh, person requires um, to have a lot of meetings with stakeholders get their business requirement come up with some kind of like what do you need as this project and then start building the whole requirement um, as a let's say either document or some kind of like conversation with the rest of the team with technical people so that they can start building that project it has to come from the business side i also mentioned it in the other video uh, you cannot build an analytical uh, team or analytical project just 
um, looking at the data. It has to come from the business side. You have to come up with their requirement. As a technical person, we should not go and suggest um, um, to let's, uh, I mean, we can suggest, but we should not enforce our decisions that say we think that you need this kind of report. The business should tell us that what information they need and then as a technical team, like our data visualizers can say, well, I can present it in this way for you, right? Business analysts can create that kind of uh, link between the two teams. Uh, the other non-technical role is project manager and data analytics team is also doing a project, right? This project has a budget, this project has a start point, end point, deadlines, milestones. Um, during building that project, you have to manage resources, who is doing what and making sure that everyone is communicating with each other. If you get to a point that you might have some risks in the project, it has to be communicated early. This is the role that works a lot with the project project sponsor, with the business analyst, with the rest of the team to make sure that the whole project goes on into a successful um, ending basically. Uh, this, is, this is an important role. Sometimes this role is combined with business analyst depending on the size of the team. Sometimes it is a separate role for itself. Uh, any mm, team usually requires some kind of like administrator um, role in it. This admin would be someone who would set the tenant settings in Power BI, in Microsoft Fabric, would probably do some database administration as well, making sure that these are workspaces to create, the access roles for each workspace. Um, if there is a gateway, what is the administration control on it, setting up the users, making sure that there is a process for backups, versioning, source control, um, that there are some reports to check that are, is everything used the way that it has to be used. Uh, it's quite a bit of process itself. So depending on the size of the team, depending on how much administration work is required, you might need to have a full-time administrator in the team. Sometimes one of your developers might do some kind of administration beside other things as well. Uh, one of, the, uh, one of the developers' roles that we need in an analytical team is ETL developer. ETL stands for Extract, Transform, Load. This is the role that would connect to different data sources, usually data sources that the business analyst, through the requirement gathering, found and said these are the data sources that we need to pull data from. Uh, ETL developer would connect to those data sources using different tools. It might be uh, Microsoft Fabric Data Factory, it might be data pipelines, it might be Python scripts, it might be SQL, it might be Power Query data flows. Any of these uh, things such as Power Query data flows has a lot of data sources that you can pull data from. Uh, so getting all of that data, integrating it, bringing it into a place that, um, that then can be used by, uh, by other developers in the team. This role also requires to have some kind of understanding of um, data warehousing concept, like for example, a slowly changing dimension, which I explained it separately in another video. I highly recommend to go and learn about it. Inferred dimension member, late arriving, late arriving fact tables. These are a lot of concepts that are not usually a data source concept. It is the concept that when we pull the data, when we load it into a data warehouse, or into a integrated place we need to be aware of. So ETL developer needs to know some of those tools, some of these concepts, plus, uh, plus knowing about SQL is always important for this type of role. Uh, another developer role is database developer. Again, depending on the scale of the project and the team, database developer and ETL developer might be the same person, but database developer usually focus a lot on on SQL coding. These would be SQL codes to retrieve the data, SQL codes to sometimes even update the data in situations such as that slowly changing dimension scenario, uh, working with stored procedures, views. Um, this would be a person that would work with the database if it requires some kind of performance tuning and things like that. It would monitor the way that the scripts are running. In terms of fabric warehouse, this would be the person who would check some of the DMVs and would monitor the way that the performance of that warehouse is, is going. And as I mentioned, sometimes it might be a role that is combined with the ETL developer together. Data engineer, um, 
data engineer is a role that does not only work with the database, it might also work with the, uh, with the data files. And those data files might be any files coming from anywhere. Sometimes the volume of data might be so big that you have to work on the raw files itself. These are the roles that um, these people know some technologies such as Spark. Spark is a um, big data parallel processing engine. Um, data engineer can work with that engine, can uh, configure that, can define Spark pools and say how many nodes do I have and how to configure these nodes. Uh, can work with notebooks, Fabric notebooks, Jupyter notebooks, works with language such as Python, Scala, R, Spark SQL, and work with um, those files and then um, and make some modifications on it, write it in a lake house or read from lake house. This is a role that would require a lot of um, scripting and understanding that big data um, engine behind the scene. Data scientists sometimes might be similar to data engineer at some level. Um, um, data scientist also works with Jupyter Notebook a lot or Fabric Notebook. Data scientists also work, work with languages such as Python. Uh, but data scientist requires to know much more information as well. As a data scientist, you know you need to know about the whole machine learning process, like what is the training set, what is the test set, what does the training model look like after you train the model, how would you test the result, how would you go through that cycle. So you need to know about that process, not only the process, you also need to know about each of the algorithms in the machine learning. For example, there's a classification algorithm, there is a decision tree algorithm, there are many algorithms. How these algorithms work, what are parameters for each algorithm. If you are working with a language such as Python, what are libraries that you can use to work with these algorithms such as SparkML, LightGBM. You need to also know about some frameworks in the machine learning process such as MLOps, MLflow, um, so that you can um, define your machine learning within a project and then know about uh, all of these. So data scientist is usually a role that requires quite a lot of work uh, and this is one of the roles that usually get uh, uh, highest paid in, in the entire team. Not necessarily always but most of the time. And as I said depending on the scale of the project sometimes this role might be combined with that data engineering role together. Data modeler, if we are talking about the Fabric and Power BI, the data modeler is a person who understands different data tables, understand the star schema, what is fact table, what is dimension table, how the star schema is built. I have a separate video about it, by the way. Um, understand what are the relationships in Power BI, what is the cross um, direction relationship, what is uh, the direction of relationship in general, what is uh, things such as role playing dimension, how to implement that and learn also to work with uh, the expression language in Power BI to write formulas and that expression language is DAX, understanding DAX, learning DAX deep dive um, and knowing about filter context, evaluation context, row context, all of those are important. This is a role that basically works with tools such as Power BI Desktop, Power BI Service, Tabular Editor, DAX Studio to get um, the requirement done in a data model so that the report visualizers go and use it. Data analyst or the report visualizer usually is a person who builds uh, the visualization. This is a person who would um, somehow have a sense of art of visualization. Um, like using colors in the way that makes sense, not just because they look beautiful. Um, you, uh, understanding the color wheel, understanding what colors goes good with the other colors, understanding how to pass the right message through the visualization to your, your, to your end users. Building effective visualization is one of the skills that the data analyst needs. This is something that you need to spend time on it. Unfortunately, in a lot of projects that I have seen, people don't spend a lot of time on the visualization. They might spend a lot of time on building the DAX calculations and, um, and gathering the data, but visualization is just like a five minute job that you do. Uh, but on the other hand side, this is a really important thing to do. This is like everything you do in the BI system and data analytics system is like back in the kitchen when you are in a restaurant as a 
uh, as a diner and what you see is the visualization, what you see is what it is on the table, the presentation. So visualization is quite important, understanding different types of charts, understanding how to work with a tool such as Power BI Desktop to implement that, learning about slicers, bookmarks, all of those technicalities, plus the fact that how do you present it in a best possible way. Uh, architect is another important role, really important role. Every team requires this role. Now, sometimes this role might be like a full-time role, depending on the size of the team. Sometimes this might be something that you get a help from outside of, uh, from an outside consultant. Architect is a person who knows about every bit of these technologies we talked about. A little bit about data science, about Power BI modeling, about data engineering, about ETL, not in a deep dive level, but no knows how this tool works, how this tool work and service work with the rest of the tools and services. Architect is a person who would design the overall um, architecture of what comes first and then what comes after that. Does, for example, the data science job comes after the data is in the warehouse or does it come after the data is in the Power BI data model? Things like that and suggest what tools to use. And this is a role that works a lot close to the rest of the team, the developers in the team, to make sure that everything followed carefully. If there is a challenge at some point using a specific tools or service, this role would help the developers to, um, to overcome that challenge. This is the role that would come with some standards and uh, governance, naming conventions, some definitions, guidelines for the rest of the team to work. This role works a lot with the team leader and project manager as well um, to make sure that the team gets up to date with the new technologies and everything is following um, technically uh, to, the right so to the right direction. Um, this role I found it useful based on some experience that I had with some of the customers that sometimes it's good to have an application developer, like an actual programmer in the team, someone who knows uh, a programming language such as C Sharp, ASP.NET, BB.NET, Java, uh, front end, back end, all of these, right? Uh, this can be helpful because sometimes you'll need to do something more than just the data analytics, just working with the database and visualization. Sometimes you might need to get part of your visualization embedded in a custom application. And who can do that? A developer, a programmer in the team can be really helpful in, in doing that. This can also help the ETL developer at some point. Sometimes you need to work with the API that there is no connector for that. So this role can help with building uh, an um, application that integrate that API and bring that data over. So having this kind of role is important, but probably is not a full-time role in a data analytics team. Uh, having someone to test the uh, work that is done in the, um, by the other members of the team is important. This usually is a role that would have like a checklist going through all the measures, calculations, visualizations, making sure that the buttons are doing what they are supposed to do, navigations is, do, is going to where they are supposed to go, the numbers are all correct, the reconciliation is an important part. Um, this is the role that would give some thumbs up to the next person who would go and say, uh, I want this change to go to live. Or this is the role that would get back to the developers and say, well, this area has an error, let's go and fix it, right? So it's an important role. Deployment manager is a person who would, um, who would control what goes to live, what goes to the end users, and what is still under progress, work in progress. Uh, this is a person who also managed the dev test um, UAT or production environment and managed the deployment pipelines from one place to another place. This might be a role that also combined with administrator role. Sometimes these two are the same thing. This role works closely with the tester, with the rest of the development team to make sure that what content is going to the live or production is the right content. Um, 
And of course, every team requires a team leader, a manager. This would be a role that would do a lot of people management, make sure that the whole team works together closely. If, for example, one person is not available, um, it is possible, totally possible in a team that one person gets off sick or something happens, the rest of the team can continue their work. Uh, make sure that the team, the overall um, um, function of the team is good, uh, setting up some team functions, morale of the team, uh, working with every team member to make sure that the whole project goes really well. Uh, this is a role that ensures that the whole team together works as a successful unit. Um, depending again on the size of the project, sometimes the team might require to get consultants. This would not usually be a full-time role. This would be like an on a de on demand basis. Sometimes it might be on performance tuning help, peer reviewing, um, making sure that everything is following the best practices. These might be, this might not be necessarily external consultant. It might be uh, getting help from someone who um, who is in another team but has some background information or it might be someone who is externally and uh, expert and have worked with many other projects and come with experience and help uh, the team. And the last one, depending on the culture in the team uh, and the organization, you might have self-service users, users within the organization that are not in the data analytics team but they are in other departments in the organization, for example, in the sales department, in HR department, in marketing department, but they understand the data um, and they are willing to uh, work with that data to come up with some visualization. So the, in that case, the core analytical team can get, get some kind of information in, a, in form of a data set and these users, these self-service users can go and consume it which in this case it is important to have some guidelines in terms of governance, uh, the right setup for workspaces and all of that. Uh, well, I, uh, this was pretty much everything I wanted to mention to you in terms of the, what the roles do we have in a data analytics team. As I mentioned, there are a lot of other things required as well, like soft skills that every role requires and other things that I mentioned in the other video that makes the data analytics team a successful data analytics team. So I'll make sure, I'll, I'll, um, I'll recommend you to go and check that. If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have weekly videos on Power BI and Microsoft Fabric. Uh, until the next video, bye.